The book explores themes of family and friendship and courage with a central message about standing up for yourself and those that you love. It's also about animal companionship, which is something that I feel really strongly about. And in addition to that, Charlie has two dads within the story and is adopted. So a generous discussion around representation and same-sex families and adoption, which is something that's really close to my heart. When my husband and I were going through the adoption process a few years ago, I had to look around to see if there were any children's books with adopted children at the forefront, and I couldn't really see any, so I made it my mission to write one. I wanted to write a book where the main character was adopted and had two dads, but which wasn't necessarily about adoption, and that's how The Last Firefox was born. So my main hope for the book is that it creates discussion amongst readers and that readers who might not see same-sex families on a day-to-day -day basis can learn to celebrate it and see that it's completely normal as long as the main ingredient is love. I'm so, so proud of this book and that The Last Firefox gets to be my debut novel. I really do feel that it's the book of my heart. I want our little boy to grow up seeing himself represented in fiction and in the books that he reads. So when he reads The Last Firefox, I want him to relate to Charlie and his family dynamic and to feel seen. I'm so, so proud to be a same-sex dad and to be able to pour that piece of my heart into this book means the absolute world to me. I'm now going to read the beginning of chapter five, which is when Charlie meets The Last Firefox for the first time. For a second, I think I must have bumped my head because when I look up from the ground, there's a boy standing over me, dressed in these weird clothes. Weirder still, he's carrying an orange puppy. Definitely must have bumped my head. I try to blink him away, but he doesn't fade. Then he starts talking, and I start to suspect he's not a side effect of my bumped head after all. He's wearing a brown fur coat that rises and falls rapidly on his shoulders as he pants. He's been running. He keeps glancing over his shoulders, towards the ivy, as if he's worried about being followed. Um. Who are you? I ask, clambering to my feet. Nobody, he insists. He glances at the puppy in his arms, then looks me up and down. Hmm, you're a bit small, but you'll have to do. Here, hold him. And just like that, I have a puppy in my arms. It's a chubby little thing, all big ears and cheese puff orange fur, which is strangely warm. It's like hugging a hot water bottle. And that's when I realise this puppy has a long, bushy tail and two pointy ears. And in fact, there's something decidedly unpuppyish about it. It's a fox, I exclaim, holding it back out to nobody. The cub dangles between us and lets out a little whine. Hey, I don't want it. Nobody stands up straight, his expression severe. It's a he. His name is Firetail. And don't hold him like that. Keep him close to you. 